the story number five. Um, let's go ahead and get on with it. Poly network hackers have returned more than half of the 600 million in stolen crypto. Here's what investors should know. What do you guys think about it? Because it's only 300 mil that they actually returned. So less than 300 million now. Oh. This, this is a very involved story. Um, it starts off with a developer that's been very active on Twitter. Uh, and they found an exploit. And they say, allegedly, that they informed all of the proper authorities about the exploit. And they did nothing. Responsible disclosure. Responsible it's disclosure. It's ruining this industry. Me. No. Me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Disclosure. Meeting. <clears throat> uh an uncaring project manager right and so the hacker basically said all this can be stolen and you don't seem to care so i'm going to steal it but he said he was going to steal it to prevent other hackers from stealing it so this is where it starts getting off the rails a little bit he stole 600 million and then he returned half <laughs> less than half who knows which half right maybe he returned everything other than what was owned by the network admins and all the insiders um but he's still on twitter defending himself saying i told you about this you refused to listen to me you refused to patch it so i stole it for your own good and the rest is what a bug bounty Sure. Yes. I mean, yes. look, look, look. No bug bounty. I'm gonna take this. That's that's a hell of a bug bounty. Well, well, well. I would contend that there was hack team out of uh, Italia. Yeah. Where? <laughs> Why does that matter? <laughs> where? It's very important. Where? Where hack team out of out of Italy, where they. Uh, we're discovering zero days, and instead of responsible disclosure, they're selling it to nations to spy on their own citizens. Right. So a zero day can be incredibly lucrative. Yeah. And you can build an entire business out of it. And I, I believe Hack Team was a uh, hundreds of millions of euros business. Uh, so I mean, it's not unheard of for this level of of a prize to happen. Ultimately, um, who knows what really happened, but the hacker is claiming some sort of self, self aggrandizing and self justificating reason for this. That was close. <laughs> it's, it's you're, a, it's a, you're close. You're close. It's a weird story. <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe, let, let's imagine that the other half belong to the network admins. I'm still not necessarily okay with it, but I'm a little bit more okay with it. I mean, I think everybody understands that this is still speculative in the sense that we, you know and understand the risks of making other kinds of investments. I think crypto still in 2021 self-selects for the more adventurous and the more technologically forward. It's this has been an episode of Bourbon and Data Breaches. If you like what you saw today, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you saw today, argue with those first people in the comment section. Uh, if you have a bourbon or a breach that you'd like us to cover, or if you're Old Forester and you'd like to finally sign that agreement that we have for sponsorship, you can contact us at contact at hacknotice.com. Until next time. Dude, believe Bye. it or not, I actually just got a lead. Thanks and gig them. All right. Can't believe we're actually getting because of this. It's like 40 minutes of B roll and like 20 minutes. Of <laughs> That's about right. Yeah. Which is all, which is like typical. I mean, so. Yep. Is that an inbound lead from the.
from no, Patty? No, that's a, um, a different cat. Um, oh, okay. I know the guy from Natty's. Oh. I don't think Dick Driver's his real name. Well, I'm hoping. 